Welcome back. It's home stretch now on the program, and of course, he is still here in the studios uh, with me as we continue to focus on Lagos State's economy, analyzing uh, Governor Ambode's ambitions. He is. Thank you so much for for sticking around. So, just before we went on that quick break, we were talking about the debt profile. Mm. Let's talk about Lagos because yeah. that's the focus now. Uh, Governor Ambode inherited a debt profile of about four hundred and eighteen point two zero billion naira. Would this not be a challenge now because these debts have to be serviced? And he's looking at a very grandiose economic you know, plan for, for Lagos, including infrastructure. As you rightly mentioned, he's talked about social infrastructure. Mm. He's talked about de infrastructure development on its own, security. Mm. And you know, there was a recent launch of an entrepreneurship fund of about 25 billion naira. So all of this is coming in. And he's got this debt that he needs to service over the next four years while he's in office with an IGR of 276.16, can he cut it? You know, I, I, I don't envy Governor Body one bit. Lagos State debt is very worrisome. The foreign uh, component is a billion, is over a billion US dollars. In fact, Nigeria's debt profile as a country, we owe about six billion US dollars, uh, external debt. So Lagos State accounts for one sixth of Nigeria's external debt. And uh, you've mentioned, you know, uh, of course, the domestic debt also is high. So if you're talking about a debt profile of over 400 billion naira, and um, you want to develop infrastructure, you, you are going to have to be very innovative, do some financial engineering, because Lagos State is still going to, you know, see, there's nothing wrong with debt per se, but we're talking about sustainable debt. I'm concerned at Lagos State uh, debt profile because if you look at uh, the fact that this is a state that ends, like we already said, the, the largest IGRO, uh, I mean, uh, in the country, uh, by, uh, by, uh, past it. This is, the, this is the, I mean, and it's, it's, remember, it still collects money from, from the federal location. And the, 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 the portion due to Lagos State is because of VAT earnings coming largely from Lagos. It's quite, it's quite uh, reasonable. So, uh, in fact, there are people that have argued that while Governor Fashola did well as governor, and we all applaud him for the good work he did, but if you put it in context and you compare how much resources were available to him by way of debt, by way of internal daily generated revenue, by way of allocations from, from the federal government, you might even say he probably underperformed. Because he could have done, I can imagine if uh, 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 a, a governor like uh, governor, the governor of Gombe State, for instance, uh, uh, that my, you know, Dan Kwabo, if he had half of what, of what Lagos State had, I'm sure he would have, I mean, he would do excellently well. So if I compare to other states, you just wonder that, ah, what is, I mean, you're not, if I, you be, you actually be annoyed. Because I actually got annoyed when I got to see how much money you come to Lagos State. And while we applaud what you've done, but in contest, you may say they are underperforming. Now, how is Ambody going to uh, uh, repay uh, that? See, I, I doubt that Ambody has any serious plans to repay the debts. Because if you're going to do a lot, you know, invest in social, uh, if, uh, uh, social services and uh, infrastructure, Ambode is going to have to even borrow a more, you know? And uh, Lagos State, you see, borrowers or lend lenders, we, 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 in Nigerian lenders, as well, the banking system, we not shy from lending to Lagos State because if you look at this, it's the economic profile, look at the uh, gross domestic product, look at the uh, revenue profile, it, Lagos State can pay back its debts. Then what but do you, you see? Where do we, sorry, sorry to, yeah. you know, in, in talking about all of this, you, mm. you also, also have to remember you're a private investor yeah. in Nigeria. Mm. And there are other private investors like yes. you in Nigeria, big businesses. We've mm. got the Lekki Free Trade Zone, we've got Dangote Refineries coming up in Lekki as well. Mm. So we're talking about private sector also keying into this very grandiose plan that mm. the Lagos State government, governor has. How would that play out? How would that help in, in, in the projection? Of, and also to probably help reduce the amount of money that the governor will have to take in terms of putting itself into debt. Well, if he's going to do road infrastructure, except maybe decides that all even the, 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 the roads, the little roads, the, that is not, I mean, the roads within communities, except he's going to use private uh, public partnership to build even those kind of roads, there's no way the private sector will get involved in road construction. The main roads that, that can be commercialized, if I even the Lekki Expressway, you are aware that Lagos State has eventually had to cancel the concession and buy it back from the concessionaire because, I mean, it wasn't working. You know, so even with the, that opportunity, the, the, in the area of infrastructure, there's still little latitude for, for private sector inv in, involvement, you know, because the, the, the road, uh, that road was a, a good pilot scheme, but fortunately it failed. 
So I don't see, I mean, I, I don't see any rule that is viable in Lagos for any, any private uh, investor to be involved in by way of a private uh, partnership. Now, the, the, um, the airport development on the Lekki stretch, there's an opportunity for, for I mean, that, that, that's the, an opportunity for private sector development, the Lekki free trade zone, you know, there are other opportunities for private sector investment. But when it comes to the uh, water infrastructure, for instance, we, don't, we, we forget that most of us drink uh, I, mean, I mean, in our homes, many of us use boreholes. If I, I was surprised when a few weeks ago, people in Sulele were complaining that they are not that public water is not running, and I like, oh, you mean what public water still see is still provided in Lagos State? Because in the last thirty years, the only time I mean, the, I, when when I was living with my parents as a child in the in the seventies and eighties, we used to have public water from the public. Uh, uh, I mean, well, from the water corporation. <laughs> but since since then. Well, some mean, areas of Lagos actually enjoy public water supply. Yeah, so but if those areas cannot be up to 5% of uh, the population of those can be up to 5% of Lagos population. Most of us. We support facts with figures. Uh, no, so no, if you have the facts, you have the figures, and we'll talk about that. are relying on Lagos State Water, water Corporation for their water supply. That's a story for another day. Yeah, yes. but the, so the point is that, you know, we, we, we're talking about infrastructure, we're talking about Lagos State also investing a lot in water. Because water is, you know, water is key. Water is life, they say. It's also key for public health, you know. Uh, so Lagos State is also going to expand its public health services. They've done well. I mean, uh, uh, if you go to general, the Bagada General Hospital now, and most of our general hospitals in Lagos State, you find that the, I mean, they, they have been uh, better equipped now, and uh, the services are better. So we must applaud that, you know. So I, uh, the challenge is that, you know, when I was talking about the repayment of the debts, as I, made some, I said something which made sounded like a bit contradictory. I said the debt is worrisome, but I said the debt is, you know, Lagos State can pay. I'm talking about being able to pay in the medium to long term. You see, and which is the challenge? You have a four-year tenure. The, the previous governor had an eight-year tenure and went a borrowing. Yes, it's done well. We, we, I mean, we see some of the projects is done, but like I said, in contest, I think you could have done much more. You know? Now, so we are going to see that some of these debts, Lagos State is going to keep, I mean, the, whoever becomes governor in 2019 is going to inherit this, a, a, a huge portion of these debts, you know, and, you know, and, 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 and successive administrations. I think it's unfair, really. It's really unfair where, yes, government is a continuum. But see, you, when, when, when you straddle your successors with huge debts, I mean, you, 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 you are putting them at a disadvantage right from the word, uh, uh, from the word go. You know? So, um, on the long term, Lagos State will eventually, I mean, Lagos State is, is, is viable by any standard, mm -hmm. you know, but the debt profile is still worrisome. I'm hoping that the one the, 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 the government will be innovative to... Um, um, not just innovative, be prudent in his management of resources. You know, because the truth is that, <laughs> uh, I mean, if you talk to someone like uh, Kakul, I mean, the Kakul guy, my friend, uh, uh, Debo Adishino, uh, he has a lot to say about the, 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 the lack of transparency of Lagos State finances. I mean, he's, he, he was, he, I mean, if you talk, so we need to see a lot more transparency in Lagos State uh, uh, resource management because. <laughs> you know, we are on air, and we, so one will not begin to talk about speculative matter, but we are, we are aware that Lagos State finances have not been as transparent, Lagos has not been as transparent as they could be. Okay, so I think that the, the, the federal, the, no, sorry, no, the no, is, free, no, I will not let you do Freedom it. of Information Act. You know that Lagos State did not sign it. I will not let you say anything, yeah. except I have no, I somebody say, from Lagos State yes. that will corroborate or otherwise whatever comments you're going to make. Okay. So we're going to have a very even table. Yeah. But what I want you to do, to, you know, to really comment on just before we end this mm. show is this uh, 25 billion uh, Naira three-year entrepreneurship trust fund that was launched uh, by the state's uh, government at 3% mm. per annum. What are your thoughts on this? Well, you know, anything that is uh, done to encourage entrepreneurs, encourage small and mid uh, micro, small and medium enterprises is always a welcome thing. But see, my concern is that, you know, we've always looked at S MSMEs from the point of view of credit, debt, financing. See, I, I am an advocate of venture capital. What I like to see is that instead of that money being put there for all lending for, to, to, to entrepreneurs, I like to see, because most of the people that, the challenge is not that it's not that there's no credit for SMEs. That most SMEs cannot even assess the credit. But then they tell you, by the time a bank tells you how much turnover you need to have over a period to just to, to, to earn it, I mean to, to, to deserve or rather have access to it, very few MSMEs you know qualify. What SMEs, what MSMEs need, micro, small, and medium enterprises need is cheap capital, and that cheap capital only comes through equity. 
I would like to see Lagos State consider deploying maybe half of that fund into, into uh, equity financing, venture capital. So you have a great idea, you're an entrepreneur, but you have no, you have no, but you, they see you can do it. And they, they, they fund it. I mean, they, have you, there's a book out uh, called Startup Nation. It's a story of Israel. Israel is the economic powerhouse today because it has the highest number of startups. And bankers don't like startups. They're looking for green, uh, for, for, for brownfields, people that have made money and just want you to, to give you more money. But the re what entrepreneurs need is equity capital, permanent funding, long term funding that is patient. Okay. And I hope that some of that money will be deployed into venture capital financing. Yes, we have to leave it there for today. But many thanks for coming on the program and sharing your perspectives with us. We've got to you know, get you back in here again for us to finish up this, uh, this conversation. To be with you, Thank you so much. Ayiz Ayiyen is uh, the CEO of Ferez Consulting, giving us his own thoughts there on how the Lagos State economy is where it is, where it should be going, and how it can get there. But that's it on today's edition of the program. Many thanks for spending time with us. Conversation continues online, of course. I'm Harriet Agmini. Have a profitable day.